Now that you've taken a look at the conventional approach of creating your own maps, you'll take a look at working with Substance Maps. Substance Maps were actually introduced in 3ds Max 2011, but were only available for Autodesk subscription customers. Officially, Substance Maps are part of the 3ds Max 2012 package. They are a set of 80 plus maps that make the process you've seen in the first movie much easier. The idea is that Substance Maps give you a set of seamless textures that you can wire to multiple channels effortlessly. What's more, they are parametric and enable you to make variations that would otherwise be time consuming to create in a paint editor. In this movie, you will create materials based on Substance Maps and apply them to the geometry in this scene. You will start with the grounds and create a material that's a mix of rocks and grass. Open the Slate Material Editor and create a standard material. Give it a name if you wish. Wire the diffuse channel to a substance map and then double click the map to see its properties. Click the Load Substance button. Most substance maps you're likely to use are found in the Textures subfolder. Unfortunately, there is no quick feedback to what a substance looks like except for its name. There is a graphical samples list available in the reference help. For now, use the Pebble Grass Substance file. Before we move on, a word on resolution. Unlike a bitmap you designed from scratch, Substance Maps are resolution independent. In the Global Substance Settings rollout, notice that the default resolution is 1024 by 1024. Although you can't change the global resolution, it is often best to leave it alone and change the multiplier value in the texture size rollout. There, you can control the resolution of independent substance maps rather than all of them at a global level. Thus, a relative factor of one half brings the resolution down to 512 by 512. Similarly, a factor of two boosts up the resolution to 2K by 2K. You can also choose to use an absolute resolution value instead of a multiplier. Double-click the Substance Nodes icon to view the map better. Apply the material to the grass object in the scene. Enable Show Map in Viewport so that you can eventually see the map once you have defined it. Scroll down to the Parameters section and have a look. Changing any of these parameters will affect the Substance Map design. Make a few changes. For example, reduce the quantity of pebbles by half to 0.5. Render the scene to see the results. The colors seem a little washed out, especially compared to the Substance node in the Material Editor. This is because of how Substance Maps handle Gamma as opposed to, say, a bitmap. You could go around the problem by turning Gamma off globally, but that's not good practice. Other materials and lighting scenarios in the scene may indeed need Gamma correction to work properly. The other solution is to color correct the substance map at the diffuse level. Insert the color correction map to the tree and double click its node to adjust its properties. Go to Lightness, Advanced and bring the RGB Gamma Contrast to about 0 0.45. 0 0.45 is the Gamma conversion resulting from dividing 1 over 2.2. 2.2 is the default gamma correction in 3ds Max. If you're in the habit of using a 1.8 gamma correction, then set the gamma contrast to 0 0.55, 1 over 1.8. Typically, a value between 0 0.45 and 0 0.55 should work quite well. Render again to see how the grass is now much greener. With the gamma correction you introduced, the render is now much closer to the original design of the substance map. Of course, you can adjust other color correction values, but simply correcting the RGB gamma contrast is a good start. In this case, editing color correction further would make the grass match the background a bit better.
Another method of adjusting substance color is to adjust hue and saturation values. At this point, the values shown here seem like guesswork and arbitrary, but in the next movie you learn how to set these values interactively. Still, the grass pebble combo is a little flat, mostly because it's only based on a diffuse map projected onto a flat plane. You could jazz it up with a bit of bumpiness. Unlike the conventional approach where you'd need to manually create a bump map or a normal map, that job is already done with substance maps. Normal maps react better to lighting than bump maps and should be used when possible. Since they are already embedded in substance maps, you might as well use them. Drag the material bump input channel and choose normal bump from the standard list. Wire the normal input output channels together. If you wish, you can even wire the Substance Map's bump output for additional bumpiness. Set the bump amount to about 70%, 0 0.7. Render again to see the difference. The grass is now coarser. Still, the general feel of the ground is still flat because the rocks, pebbles, have no volume. You can fix that with displacement maps. Wire the substance map's displacement output to the material's displacement input. Enlarge the sample slot. At this time, it's a uniform gray. You need to adjust the relief balance value to have an effect on displacement. The default relief value is 32. At this value, the displacement map is completely defocused and the bump and normal maps are sharp. Set the relief value to zero and watch how the displacement map comes into focus and the normal and bump maps are blurred. Displacement maps are usually used in small intensity, so set the displacement value to 5%, 0.05, and render the scene. This time, the rocks, pebbles, seem to protrude from the ground in a very realistic way. Adjust the relief balance to bring back some bumpiness into the material. Be aware that using both bump and displacement can have an unwanted effect where objects meet. Often, you need to adjust smoothing groups and even geometry for displacement maps to work properly. Let's do another one. You will create a material for the stone walls in the yard. Create a new standard material and name it stone walls. In the diffuse channel, wire a substance map. Double click its node and load the file stones01. Apply the material to the low walls in the scene. Reduce the rock amount value to 0 0.4, the hue shift to 0 0.078, and the saturation to 0 0.583. You can try other values, but the results cannot easily be viewed in the material editor. The next movie will show you an intuitive way to get values that work for you. Insert the color correction map and set its RGB gamma contrast to 0.45 or 0.55 as you did earlier. Enable show map in viewport on the substance map. Wire the displacement input output channels and set the relief balance to zero.
Set the displacement amount to about 2%, 0.02, and render the scene. If you wish, you can add a bit of specularity to the stones. Wire the substance map specular output to the material specular level input. Set the intensity to about 150%, 1.5, and render the scene. Now the stones are catching a few more highlights. So far, parameter values were given to you. You can certainly adjust them to your own liking. However, in the next and last movie, you'll be shown a free utility that will help you get the right look to your substance maps interactively. You will use this tool to prep the maps for materials that you apply to the house.